and welcome to episode 136 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 8th of October so welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, I have a blast from the past which is a crochet project, I have some cross stitch to show you, I have a gadget, I have a couple of <laughs> I have my shop update information at the very end of the podcast. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, um, higher higher knitting needles and bag making supplies including fabrics and wadding etc. So we have the Craft House Magic Gift Along 2020 going on at the moment. It's going on in the Ravelry group but also on Instagram and you can use the hashtag CHM Gift Along 2020. So any gifts that you're making for the festive period or to be honest if they're birthday gifts or whatever, if it's a gift at all, um, come and join in with what you're making. I will be doing a sort of separate Christmas themed make along it'll start a bit later in the year um, when we're feeling a bit more festive um, so that's why I thought I'd separate the gifting um, as a separate um, make along so do watch out for that so let's get on with the knitting shall we I am very excited to show you my mitten <laughs> there's only one I'm afraid but I am loving this pattern so this is the way through the woods pattern by Erica Mount and it is gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. I especially love this little house at the top here. Absolutely love it. And then we've got some trees and some Latvian braids in the middle there to give some nice detail. We have a fox, a rabbit, a squirrel. And we also have a little reindeer at the bottom here. On, on the thumb as well, there is also a little squirrel. On the back we have a bear and lots and lots of trees. In fact, I love just the tree bit. I think that's really lovely. So this is the left hand mitten. And I can't actually wear it very long yet because it is very, very warm. I love it. So that's how it's looking. So I used Blackie Yarns and I used two different bases actually. The white yarn is a Shetland from Blackie Yarns and the teal is a Jacob from Blackie Yarn. So they're both about the same weight. They're four ply as well. And I thought that that would make a nice contrast. So this is the third time I cast them on. I did start with 2.5 millimeter needles. It came up too tight. So I then did three millimeters. It was too big. <laughs> so I used 2.75 millimeter needles for these. And I used a nine inch circular for most of the mitten and then to, right here when I started doing the decreases I had to switch to DPNs but I don't think that I'm quite as neat at my colour work keeping my floats nice and neat um, where I use the DPNs and of course I use the DPNs for the thumb as well um, but I think that a lot of the messy stitches should block out once I've actually blocked those but I'm really pleased with how that come out and it's so pretty what a gorgeous pattern and I'm excited to cast the second one on. So I'll leave links to the pattern and the yarn I used in the description bar down below. And I've also put a list of timestamps of the different sections in the description bar as well. So you can click to the next one if you're not interested in, in a particular section. So that's my mittens and I have a second project to show you. So Adam's mum has been giving me a hand with knitting a sample of my Cupid's Arrow wrap. But this time I thought I'd show it without the tassels, just to show you what it looks like without tassels. I may add them later though, but I thought I'll show you before I've actually added them, just so that you can see. And this is actually knitted with a lot of colours that are in my shop already. So it's the same um, shape as the ones I've showed you before. But without the tassels so I shall try and name all the colorways so first of all we have this one which is jump in the line the next one here is come on Eileen then we have these days so we've got a bit of the same color as come on Eileen is in these days as well we then have there she goes with little pops of pink and then we fade into Lucky Star, which is a pale pink with black speckles, or grey speckles. And we have I'm Too Sexy, which is slightly darker pink with speckles as well. We have Cornflake Girl, which is different pink 
lashes we have tell it to my heart which is different sort of pinks and browns we have love shack which is a bit of a similar colors to tell it to my heart but a bit sort of darker um, we have nothing's going to stop us now we have i think we're alone now walking on sunshine magic dance almost unreal show me heaven smells like teen spirit um, holding out for a hero which is sort of greys and greens rock me amadeus which is blue green and purple we have paradise city which is green and purple we have babushka we have what a feeling which is sort of turquoise and pinks we have don't stop me now which has got splashes of sort of blue bluey purple in there on a teal color we have got don't stop believing which is a slightly lighter blue with different little tiny bits of pink in it and then we've got running up that hill at the end you can't really see the colorway very well with it being lace but it's a sort of tonal different shades of blues and greens in there with a little splash of brown so there we go we've got all those colors it's a bit of a rainbow but I just thought it'd be nice to use some of the colourways that are in my shop. It isn't actually blocked yet so it'll neaten up slightly when I block it. But that's what it looks like without the tassels. So that pattern will be available at the end of November but if you have purchased an advent calendar the, um, the pattern will be emailed to you automatically, you get that free. There will be a few advent calendars available in this Friday's update. So I've dyed more than I needed for the ones that people have ordered. So I'm now listing them in the shop. I will talk a little bit more about that at the end of the podcast though. So I'm also very excited about casting on my Slip Stravaganza shawl, which is a mystery lit along, which is um, written by Stephen West. And he does it normally this time of year, every year. And you get basically a clue every week for four weeks and you get to knit a whole shawl. And it's so exciting because you don't really know how it's going to turn out. As long as you love the colours that you use, that's the most important thing. So I picked three skeins out of my stash and they were these three. So I've got, oops, I've got a Lolo Did It yarn um, and that's called I Love Daryl and I've had this a couple of years. I bought it when I went to on holiday in Florida and I got this Blue Skin yarns and this colourway is called Spanish Lullabies. I thought that went nicely with it because it's got a very similar base and I think that this third skein, this fondant fibre skein, actually ties them both together because there's little bits of green in there or a sort of olivey green and purple as well which tie them both together which I think is lovely and this is called Sentimental Journey and they are all on a similar thickness of yarn about 350 metres per 100 gram skein these two are merino cashmere and nylon they're pretty much the same base but this one has got merino and tensile but they both oh, they all feel very similar so i then thought i think a nice dark gray would tie those together nicely i'm going to see if i can hold these up in front of the camera all in one go so there i've just dyed a tonal gray on my merino cashmere and nylon base and this is actually the living on the prayer colorway um, that i sell in my shop so i think that will be absolutely gorgeous so excited i can't get the full loveliness of the colorways in one shot <laughs> it's difficult to get it all in but there we go i will cake them up and next week i'll be able to show you something that i've already started so I'm very excited about that so that's all the knitting that i have to show you but i do have some crochet which is my blast from the past section so i was just hanging around in my craft room as you do <laughs> <laughs> and I found this little rose brooch that I'd crocheted 
absolutely ages ago. Now I decided that it was perhaps a little too large to actually be a brooch so I've just left it um, as a little decoration in my craft room which I think is lovely but I thought I'd show it to you today because it's a lovely free pattern. So it's called, it's literally called just the Rose Brooch by Daniela Herberts um, and it is a free pattern like I said and you can basically do it in any yarn because you'll just end up with a larger or a smaller um, rose. And the yarn that I used was a Debbie Bliss Cash Merino Aran yarn and I used a four millimetre crochet hook for that. But I just thought that that was really sweet. That would actually make a nice little gift for Christmas, a little brooch. Um, and you could do all sorts of sizes. You could use sort of little scraps of fluffy yarn to make something really lovely as a gift. So there we go. That's my blast from the past. I've got to make more of a habit of having all my sections in most of the podcasts instead of thinking, oh, there's too much to show today. <laughs> so that was my blast from the past. And I have some cross stitch to show you. So here is my cross stitch. And I've done quite a bit of work on that top row. I thought that I would actually finish it, but I haven't quite finished it. So I think I would got to about here on this side and I've filled in all of the um, green leaves and the sort of flowery bits. I suppose they're not really flowers but you get the idea <laughs> and then I've started filling in these golden veins of the leaves on this side but I haven't quite got to this side yet but you can see the difference that gold thread makes in the leaves I think that really finishes it off nicely I love how this is looking so I have another border to go at the bottom and then a border all the way around so I'm getting there slowly I'm still doing my 20 minutes every day and sometimes if I remember I'll pop a little picture on my Instagram stories so do come and follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see little updates in between podcasts I've been trying to be better at posting on Instagram as well I'm dreadful <laughs> <laughs> so what this pattern is is a Moira Blackburn pattern and that's what it's supposed to look like in the end you can see that I'm working on this top bit here I've got to finish off this band across here and then do the frame all the way around so this pattern is a vintage one but I do I have found a place where you can purchase it now uh, as they brought it out again which is brilliant mine was purchased from a charity shop and it is many years old I think it was from the early 80s or something and I have had it a few years before I even started it so now we're on to my gadget section so I have been very rubbish at doing my gadget and my friend Jean said Ellie I haven't seen any gadgets on your podcast for quite some time now and I said yes Jean I'm running out but then I thought I have got one or two things I could show you so tweezers today these are a standard cheap pair of tweezers that I use next to my sewing machine um, and in fact I've got a pair next to each of my sewing machines I've got an overlocker and a cover stitch and I have a pair of tweezers next to them the overlocker and the cover stitch machine actually came with tweezers which are a bit fancier than this but these are very very cheap ones I think they might have been out of a cracker actually but they're very useful for picking threads and things out if you're trying to clean your bobbin out and things like that or when you're threading the needle sometimes having a pair of tweezers is really useful but I have these <laughs> they are a pair of tweezers with a light on so there's a button that lights up I won't shine it directly at the camera because it'll blind you um, but you can see where you're picking things up which I think is brilliant and the other day I found this very useful because I wanted to clean um, some lint out of the bobbin case in my sewing machine and I couldn't quite see um, and just having this light it was fantastic <laughs> and this actually was from Primark so you can pick them up from the most unexpected places and I'm sure they sell tweezers with a light um, just on Amazon and things but I did pick this up from Primark but I would definitely recommend it to, just to go with your standard sewing machine so that you can see when you're cleaning your bobbin case and um, making sure everything's all nice and clean ready for you to sew so that's my gadget for this week and they're very inexpensive as well which is always good so now it's time for the confessions i haven't 
been on any of the fabric websites <laughs> this week so it's very good but I did have a I was just having a little bit of a route through one of my drawers and I found this pattern that I'd picked up um from what shop was it called Peakside Needleworks um a few weeks ago and I thought wow when I finish my big cross stitch I need another one to get on with and this is perfect because it is sort of wintry snowy Christmassy themed and I need to get that started don't I <laughs> so I thought better get some fabric and some threads ready so I was looking on the back on the back of the packet it tells you exactly what you need and the amount of fabric the the threads that you need so I popped over to Peakside Needleworks again and I picked up just a nice small piece of linen so I think it's brilliant because Peakside Needleworks you can actually buy a small piece of linen without buying a large piece because I don't know whether I'll get on with the linen you see for cross stitch so I just wanted to try a little bit and it, I think it was £3 for this little piece whereas if you buy like um, a fat quarter or something it was coming up £12 so if you're just wanting a little bit um, to just for a particular project absolutely brilliant this fabric is actually called 28 count cashel raw natural and it's 1 16th size so 9.5 inch by 13 and a half inches for that piece and that is plenty big enough um, to do this one so I think that'll be rather lovely the actual recommendation for fabric is a 28 count natural raw linen from Zweigert I think this is Zweigert as well actually when I've selected it from the little panel I can't remember but I've told you all the details about it anyway so you'll be able to find it if you did want to look on the website and then I decided well I'm not going to use the threads I've got the million threads of my drawer that are sort of similar not quite the right colours but I thought I'm going to treat myself <laughs> so I picked up two of the um the gentle art threads that were recommended in the actual proper pattern and then some of the just dmc threads to go for this as well but i did notice that so in the actual picture here the house looks quite blue but this is the this color here is supposed to be the blue for the house and i don't know if it's contrasty enough from the white but i'll have to see have a go i'm dropping the threads everywhere here that Peakside Needleworks didn't have any stock of the glittery stuff. So this is a DMC Light Effects um, and it's a 5283 colourway. So it's a glittery gold thread, which I've never stitched cross stitch with before. So that'll be exciting to try. But they didn't have it at Peakside Needleworks. So I tried a new shop called the Patchwork Rabbit. Um, and they were very, very quick as well. So both these are small companies and they both dispatched literally immediately when I ordered them and they arrived the next day so that was very exciting a nice little treat to myself so I've got all my threads ready now I think there was one thread that they recommended on here I think it's called grape leaf which is one of the greens which is one of the hand dyed ones which I couldn't get hold of there um, but I think that I'll probably I did buy the DMC alternative as well so there we go that's my naughty confessions for this week <laughs> and I've just got my shop update to share with you so like I said there will be one or two advents which I've dyed up and they're ready to ship there will be no more after these so once these have gone they're gone so the update will be tomorrow the 9th of October at 7 p.m. UK time. If you do want an extra 100 gram skein for, in addition to your advent, if you just purchase the advent as normal and leave me a note with your order or drop me an email just after and then I can add it in, re in retrospect. Um, it's just that because there are only a limited number of advents, I just thought I'd simplify it a little bit. So there'll be a choice between the merino nylon base or the merino nylon and stilina but they'll all be 24 day advents 20 gram ones that's all that i'll have listed and these will be the last ones for this year um, until next year i do have one or two more things to share with you that are going to go in the shop which are to do with higher higher stock so i've decided that it might be a good idea to stock 12 inch circular needles the fixed ones for doing sleeves and things so 
I've tried to stock um, from about three millimeters to five millimeters so that it, it covers sort of um, garment size needles but they're really handy for doing sleeves especially when you're knitting right down to the cuff you haven't got as much um, you haven't got to do magic loop basically so those will be going in the shop there were one or two sizes missing um but not very many and I've, i'm stocking them in steel and sharp needles as well and hopefully in the near future they'll all be completely fully stocked there have been some issues with um higher higher deliveries to the warehouse that's why some of my items aren't fully stocked but they will be as soon as they get um into the higher higher warehouse which is literally up the road from me i decided after i'd bought the miniature sock needle set that after i'd seen that they do these adapters so you can put the needles that are larger than 2.75 and above onto the miniature cables because the miniature cables are very very light i thought that it might be a good idea to have those adapters in the shop I've also decided to stock the cable stoppers for the miniature needles as well so I've got these beaded uh, cable stoppers for the small cables but now for the miniatures as well I also saw these needle gauges which I thought were adorable so the I have the sheep ones in stock but I thought these were such a lovely color and I've got some bright pink ones as well and they've got the needle sizes for in millimetres and US terms and there is a ruler on the other side which I think is quite handy and that's in inches and centimetres as well it's got a cute little panda on that side and there's your measurement so that's all I've got to share with you today so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you next week bye